The angel, Peter had been tied to four soldiers, and the angel just slapped Peter like that, bam, and the chains fell off. He couldn't do that by himself. And the angel said, Peter, get up, put on your clothes. The angel didn't put on the clothes for Peter. Peter had to put on his clothes. But what Peter couldn't do, the angel did. What Peter should do, the angel didn't do. The failure of many Christians is that they think prayer will do what their brain is supposed to do what their leg is supposed to do. Prayer won't do that. Prayer will release grace. Prayer will make the person to interview you. To be, he has not met you, but his heart is already designed, arranged to pass you. But God requires that you should read up. And just brush up. And on the Friday, Monday, the Sunday before the brush up, he's just not doing anything. Just went to sleep. I, I prayed. In fact, they have anointed my head with favor. And the Holy Spirit speaks with me. Read this part, read this particular, read this, read this, read this. Read this. And he gets there on Sunday. The man already likes him. Favor is working. And they say, Well, good morning. Uh, which area do you know best? Um, <laughs> Even the man that wants to favor him is embarrassed. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got to get a favor. It's a very interesting thing, isn't it? So you see, the devil makes the things of the devil look innocent modern by getting the icons of the generation this generation the movie stars are the icon majorly in some previous generation it was scientists and things like that are you following what i'm saying but in the last generation it's going to be a combination of different people they will glorify and glamorize things of satan look at the homosexual community lesbian gay bisexual transgender community some of the biggest names in the world that you can't think of. I hope you follow what I'm saying. The devil is selling a message. Being on the wrong side of God makes you creative. That's not so. Creativity is generally what God gave to man as part of divinity inside humanity. It's part of the image of God in every human being. But you know, there are, there are people here that are fashion designers that religion has made you think that fashion design is evil. Are you what I'm saying? You can design fashion dresses in such a way that you take clothes off people or you can design fashion in the way that put clothes on people. Which one do you want to do? The spirit that rules you will choose how you do your own design. Did you get what I'm saying? Amen? I told the young men that you know right from long ago when i see pastors wants to address young youth meeting he does the jacket like this and talks as he shed i say bro are you sick <laughs> now what you have just done by that is affirm a young man that is dressing like that that is okay But well, you help him to dress properly. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Praise God. Amen. So as a child of God, we see the second line of attack of the devil. The third line of attack of the devil is simple. Make the word of God sound like the word of men. See, that's his opinion. That's not what the Bible says. 
Sometimes people in attacking the Bible will make blatant statements of lies and inaccuracies. Are you following what I'm saying? Like some people say David and Jonathan were homosexuals. I say, oh no. You, I mean, even the devil knows that, that the devil can support that lie. David was so hot-blooded that when he was 70 and he was sick, they wanted to be sure that David would die. They said, the only way you know that David would die, let's send a young girl inside. If nothing happens to that girl, prepare for burial. I suppose, can anybody now call David homosexual? There wasn't, even, even if you suggested that, that the devil said, no, no, don't spoil my reputation. David is not a homosexual. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but you see, that's how bad some people can get. <laughs> so the devil makes the word of God appear as the opinion of men. Amen. And as an adjacent attack to that, he makes the leading figures of Christianity look ordinary. Listen to this point by highlighting the faults and foibles in their lives so as to discredit their messages. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's one of the things I tell people that are pastors. If you're going to be a pastor, you've got to understand that people will not judge you based on your kindness and your good deeds. Amen? The world is going to look for your faults. And you should be careful. I hope you're following what I'm saying. The reason why the world is looking for your faults is the fact that here is a leading professor successful in his field but in marriage is a wreck. He's in his third or fourth marriage so he has concluded marriage is not correct. And because of who he is in society nobody can confront that. And here is a pastor that is preaching on marriage and the man wants to say listen to me you can't set a moral standard that is unattainable. The fact that your life does not attain it does not mean it is not so. Are you following what I'm saying? You don't interpret the word of God by your experience. You, you interpret your experience by the word of God. Conversion means I bring my life to the word of God and the word of God adjusts me. If you are looking at the mirror and you are arguing with the mirror, you are insane. The word of God is the mirror that God gave human beings. It, do, it didn't say you are perfect. It just means adjust yourself. What does the word of God say? Husband, love your wife and you are mistreating your wife. Adjust to that. And start loving your wife. And start, don't argue with that scripture. You don't know my wife. You can, nobody can love my wife. Even God can't love my wife. That is, you, you need some deliverance there. God knows you are not perfect. So once you find what the Bible says about something, begin to adjust. If you, are, if you want to dress up in the morning and your mirror tells you that your, your tie is off, off balance, you adjust it. You don't agree and say, this mirror, adjust yourself. This tie is okay. If you do that, people will know you need a bed in arrow. But because the person that is arguing with the Bible on marriage, nobody can talk to him. He needs a bigger bed in arrow than the person arguing about the tie. Because he's arguing with the mirror of God. This one is arguing, arguing with an ordinary mirror. Do you get what I'm saying? And somebody say, who are you to argue with Professor and so? I'm not arguing with Professor and so. Professor and so and so is arguing with the Bible. I'm just preaching the Bible. Amen? So the devil makes the word of God to look like opinions of men. Can you get what I'm saying? And attack it by highlighting the, the, that every pastor fail will not change the Bible. Is he a pastor you accepted when you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? Huh? You see somebody say, hey, I, I don't even want to go to church. Christians are hypocrites. Is that what you receive? Is Jesus you receive of Christians? Huh? When people say that, they are trying to cover up for their own inability to live up to the standards of the Bible. That you deny the standards of the Bible will not quiet in your conscience. Are you following what I'm saying? Christians are not perfect people. They are forgiving people. God did not call anybody to perfection. He called us to excellence. And excellence simply means improvement. Write it and don't forget that. God hasn't called you to, to, to perfection. Oh, you, perfection will take place when you cross the barrier between time and eternity. But between now and that time, you are to improve every day. You get better every day. If there is no room to improve in your life, you are ready to go to heaven. Hello? 
The difference between a Christian and a sinner is the fact that a Christian feels bad if he does something bad. A sinner doesn't feel bad. Do you get that? If you can do something wrong and you don't feel bad, you are not born again, that's all. You may be religious, you may be church attending, but if you are truly born again, you feel bad. If you speak roughly to your wife or speak roughly to your husband or you do something that you shouldn't do, do you get what I'm saying? Something doesn't leave you alone inside until you make it right. That is the sign of salvation. Amen. You went to visit somebody and they gave you their biro to sign and you forgot the biro from the bank to your office and you couldn't sleep. Ah, this biro, how did that? Have... Oh, oh. And you went, that is a sign that something is right inside you. And then you go back to the bank tomorrow and say, sorry, this bank, this biro, I took it yesterday, I forgot it. Oh, they say, we, even didn't, we, we just didn't notice it was missing. They may not notice it was missing, but somebody noticed it was in your hand, in the spirit. And it didn't leave you alone. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody says, well, praise God. You prayed and asked God to bless you with money, and you saw 100,000 that is dropped somewhere, and you picked it and said, God answered it. No, no, God allowed you to find it. Somebody that lost that money prayed, God, hey, don't let my money be missing. And God, look, who can I allow to find this money that will return it? You! As a child of God, he allowed you to find it because you return it. He didn't allow you to find it as an answer to your own prayer. He answered that person's prayer. Return it. God is still going to answer your prayer. God doesn't answer your prayer on the tears of another person. Are you following what I'm saying? You're a young girl that is looking for a husband. You are 32. And now there's a man at work in your place of work that his wife and himself, they are quarreling. And he keeps on liking you. Oh, my dear, how are you? I stand there and everything like that. And you say, God is answering your prayer. No, 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 no. Bind that devil. God wants to help, to help that man to go back to, her, to, her, to his wife. God will not answer your prayer by destroying his home. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now say, Pastor, ah, thank God my pastor has anointed. You know some of the testimonies that you hear on radio and television? We should investigate those testimonies. Some testimonies accusing God of being a partner to crime. Are you following what I'm saying? He said, past man of God, just prayed and I traveled from here to every coast without a passport and without any visa. That God, you are accusing God of criminality. God doesn't do that. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Oh. oh, oh, oh. I tell people, <laughs> if you come with that kind of, when I pray for you, that's what they will first of all point out. <laughs> so these are the three areas of the attack that devil brings I hope you got that huh? so last week we saw okay the natural the kingdom and the church you remember that and then I said something and I want to repeat it again. The church is a key element in developing generational flows of the kingdom of God on the earth. The family is the key element in developing generational flows of a natural order. The family. Okay, you find the word like tendencies, traits, mannerisms, spirits, genes. You know, when you look at the word genealogy, generation genes. I want you to read the book of Titus. I think it's Titus 2, 13 or so that says he has saved us by the washing of water of God and the regeneration of the spirit or something like that. Okay? I want to look at this. Your genes come through your ancestral lines. How many of you know that? Huh? Good. So, you don't struggle to look like your natural father and natural parents. You don't struggle to have certain tendencies. In fact, some people that know you, or that know your father, if they haven't known you, if they interact with you sometimes, they say, I do know so and so. Or if they know your siblings, there are certain traits that are common. 
I hope you're following what I'm saying. Praise God. Have you found the Titus passage? Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Now look at this. How many of you see this word generation? That is your first line, natural, re, gene, okay, R, regeneration. This is the second line. This is natural birth. This is divine birth. Did you get that? Yes, that was three, five, bad. Okay? Did you get this point? Doctors can tell you things that are carried in the genes. Have you heard some people say he doesn't believe in generational causes? Huh? I've heard preachers say that, that anybody that is teaching and preaching about generational causes and things like that is preaching error. But that person is either illiterate, fraudulent, or simply ignorant. If you go to the hospital, they will tell you if, you, if some of your first cousins, first level ancestors have certain things, you have more than 75% degree of having it. That is simply generational causes. Sickness is not a generational blessing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It has been found that cancers, diabetes, doctors help me out here. How many other diseases are hypertension? Any other one? Asthma? Mental disorders? <laughs> Sickle cell? Epilepsy? What do you say? Allergies. <laughs> Let us stop there because of the, before we bring this before we bring this kind of things into the atmosphere, we we'll have to start casting them out now. <laughs> now, 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 all these are passed through the genes, the bloodlines. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, watch this. Now, the Bible says God has delivered us and saved us through the washing of regeneration. So there is a re gene. There is a first gene. When God released those genes that map out your physical mannerism and manifestations. When you get born again, there is a re, re, again. But the genes now are genes that are under the anointing. How do you now come up after you are born again, listen to this, that now you have a manner, a manifestation in life that does not follow your first line. Did you get what I'm saying? How will somebody that's natural bad has SS blood group? There's a way that doctors say that that blood group will manifest in your physical body going forward. How do you come up now to take advantage of regeneration to counter what natural things say must happen? Now listen to this. There is a natural order that God placed on the earth through genealogies. And if there is no divine intervention, it will take place. Did you get what I'm saying? And when Christians don't understand that, they can find themselves with a natural order that physically predicts that they die young and they don't do anything about it. And they die young when being born again. People say, why God failed them? God didn't fail them. Ignorance failed them. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Did you get what I'm saying? And this kind of knowledge, many churches don't have time and don't take time to teach it. Different manifestations. These are the physical side that we are dealing with. There are other social sides. If you come from a family that your parents have divorced, you have in your soulish dimension a donation of the tendencies that will attract you to a woman or a man that your natures are so incompatible that you end up divorcing. Are you following what I'm saying? Spirits have been authorized by that act of your parents to now work in attacks of divorce against the seed of those people. What we call ancestral battles are the battles that defeated our ancestors and now face their seeds. Why must you be victorious in your own generation? Why must you make sure 
that any battle and any issue that you are dealing with, you conquer it so that you can hand over generational victory to your children. So that even if they fail, it will be their fault, not that you donated failure to them. But every one of us must know what kind of donation has been given us by our parents. You come from a family that your father is a philanderer. He chases anything in skates. Every male from that man has that tendency except there is a divine intervention. Do you get what I'm saying? I told you the, young, the story of the young boy at Elisha many years ago that went for follow-up. This boy is anointed. He's called. We are looking to groom him as one of the future pastors of the ministry. Just like the other ones that came in when they were in school. And then it didn't come back that night. We worried. I, I, worried, I couldn't sleep. We sat every hospital in Lesha. We checked police station. They couldn't find him. What am I going to tell his mother? He's staying with me in my house. What am I going to do? We couldn't sleep. Prayed overnight and God just kept quiet. The following morning, he showed up. Where do you come from? You know what happened? He, where he went to do follow-up, he saw a College of Education girl that is plating her hair. This is a boy that is doing evangelism. <laughs> and he saw the girl and said, Ah, ah. That's how he started toasting the girl and the girl shouted, the landlord arrested him and they detained him in the house. We were searching hospitals and police stations. He's detained in one house. He said he would sleep there, that he would sleep with the girl. So the girl shouted, and then they detained him there. And when I said, go and, go and tell your mother to come. I want to report it to your mom. And when the mother came, I told the mother what he did. The mother is illiterate, does not, is not a Bible teacher. Huh? She said, ah, babare lo jo. Yaume fan babare. The woman put her finger right on it. It's an ancestral flow. The boy didn't know it's coming back to him. Can you imagine on evangelism? That spirit really wrapped him up. He wasn't at a party. He was on evangelism. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't laugh at that. There are girls that every woman in her family, they have suffered marriage mistreatment. They are the ones that work and pay for their husbands. Your mother is one that raised you, paid for your father and all. Now you are married, your husband is out of job. That spirit is coming. Know how to stand against it. And don't go and listen to a stupid pastor that says there's nothing like ancestral causes. But God gave you a foundation to start by the kingdom regeneration. Now it brings you to church where the tendencies that we counter these natural tendencies will be formed inside you. Church is not a place to go just to show your face on Sunday. Are you following what I'm saying? It's a place where the, re, where the new genes are to be developed to give a new life to yourself and raise a new manifestation. You can't go to a church that somebody sees you carrying a girl in your car and say, bro, what happened? Say that it's not your business. That church will fail you. I feel like I'm saying you believe in Jesus as your head, you belong to a church as your family. You are accountable to the church. Church membership is not attendance, church membership is followership and accountability. If every Christian in Nigeria that says a Christian and attend church, they are accountable to the authority of the pastor, they will have behaved better in government. If somebody holds them accountable, are you following what I'm saying? In, in, in this land, and in every place that you see, you have, you have, people have had my ministry over the years in the country. And in this land, if any member of this church if they have issue in town, they know what to do. They come and report them. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. Somebody came to one of our pastors and said, this happened to the child of one of your members. And we know that your church will do something about it. So they came to report. And when they told me, I said, well, they have an issue here. He has a point here. They can't cheat them. Let them go for a test and, and clarify the matter, first of all. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise God. And the problem that people have is this. There are some scriptures that say if, for example, a pastor must have his children under control. You remember that, in that place when he's talking of conditions of being a pastor? He's talking of children. He's not talking of adults. Do you hear what I'm saying? The law is binding on a pastor while his children are children. Once the children become adults, you don't hold an adult responsible for the decision of another adult. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen? If you are 18 and you say you want to get pregnant, 
and that it will describe your, the ministry of your father at 18 you are an adult if you travel to UK they won't take you on a child's passport did you get what I'm saying you will go on your own passport as an adult as 18 you can vote in Nigeria you are an adult that scripture is not binding on you and your father again if you get pregnant you are pregnant on your own I hope you follow what I'm saying why would Jesus come into the world and say on this rock I will build my church why if jesus come again today listen to this what will jesus do establish a school or establish a church he will establish the church the church can establish the school but jesus will not establish the school the daniel company we are in the last phase of the move of god on the earth and god is combing the church for a peculiar set of people that are going to be his battle axe in this end time move these are the group of people who are camouflaged weapons that god has reserved in his arsenal till this time men of the class of daniel the daniel company series in these prophetic books reverend olushola yodelia rogun with his arsenals of teaching strategies and trainers anointing reveals god's process for preparing the members of the daniel company for their manifestation you get critical learning principles and truths of the kingdom to become and remain in the daniel company get hold of these divine prescriptions for how to become a member of the daniel company you can visit our website abundantlifehouse.org or call 003 725 2124 or 090 3229 to get your copies now the daniel company be a part of it Got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. I've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. No more toil, no more toil. Got an ass.